Well, that's the problem. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the Apple card. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe in their quest to understand the first stars and galaxies that lit up the cosmos. Astronomers are still in the dark, but getting closer to enlightenment one discovery at a time. That's the incredible, inescapable conclusion from unprecedented discoveries by the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, the $10 billion time machine that just recently closed its first year of observations. Designed to glimpse the faint infrared glow of the universe's earliest luminous objects, Webb's vision reached back into the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, allowing it to obtain more and better data about newborn galaxies than any other facility yet built. But its haul of galactic baby pictures has proved more bountiful than most researchers dared to dream. Simply put, candidate galaxies in the early universe are popping up in numbers that defy predictions, with dozens found so far. And that makes scientists freak out. As Charlotte Mason, an astrophysicist at the University of Copenhagen, said, we really weren't expecting this. In the weeks and months following JWST's findings of surprisingly mature early galaxies, theorists and observers scrambled to explain them. Could the bevy of anomalous big and bright early galaxies be illusory, perhaps because of flaws in analyses of the telescope's initial observations? If genuine, could they somehow be explained by standard cosmological models? Or just maybe were they the first hints that the universe is more strange and complex than even our boldest theories had ever supposed? And was the Big Bang Theory wrong? Join us today as we dig deep into how the James Webb Space Telescope broke the universe. Let's get to the point. To understand the dilemma, let's go back to when the universe was believed to have been formed. After the Big Bang, the infant universe began cooling off. Within a few million years, the roiling plasma that filled space settled down, and electrons, protons, and neutrons combined into atoms, mostly neutral hydrogen. Things were quiet and dark for a period of uncertain duration, known as the cosmic dark ages. Then something happened. Most of the material that flew apart after the Big Bang is made of something we can't see, called dark matter. It has exerted a powerful influence over the cosmos, especially at first in the standard picture. Cold, dark matter, a term that means invisible or slow-moving particles, was flung about the cosmos indiscriminately. In some areas, its distribution was denser, and in these regions, it began collapsing into clumps. Visible matter, meaning atoms, clustered around the clumps of dark matter. As the atoms cooled off, they eventually condensed, and the first stars were born. These new sources of radiation recharged the neutral hydrogen that filled the universe during the so-called epoch of reionization. Through gravity, larger and more complex structures grew, building a vast cosmic web of galaxies. Meanwhile, everything kept flying apart. The universe is expanding rapidly. The astronomer Edwin Hubble figured out in the 1920s that the universe is expanding and in the late 1990s, his namesake, the Hubble Space Telescope, found evidence that the expansion is accelerating. Think of the universe as a loaf of raisin bread. It starts as a mixture of flour and water, yeast, and raisins. When you combine these ingredients, the yeast begins respiring, and the loaf begins to rise. The raisins within it stand for galaxies stretching further apart from one another as the loaf expands. The Hubble telescope saw that the loaf is rising even faster. The raisins are stretching further apart. Bright galaxies were an order of magnitude heavier than the ones that formed concurrently in the simulations. Some astronomers and media outlets claimed that JWST was breaking cosmology, but not everyone was convinced. One problem is that CDM's predictions aren't always clear-cut. While dark matter and dark energy are simple, Visible matter has complex interactions and behaviors, and nobody knows exactly what went down in the first years after the Big Bang. Those frenetic early times must be approximated in computer simulations. The other problem is that it's hard to tell exactly how far away galaxies actually are. In the months since the first papers, the ages of some of the alleged high redshift galaxies have been reconsidered. Some were demoted to later stages of cosmic evolution because of the updated telescope calibrations. Sewer 1749, for example, 
is found in a region of the sky containing a cluster of galaxies whose light was emitted 12.4 billion years ago, and NIDAR says it's possible the galaxy is actually part of this cluster, a nearer interloper that might be filled with dust that makes it appear more redshifted than it actually is. According to NIDAR, Sir 1749 is weird. No matter how far away it is, it would be a new type of galaxy that we did not know of, a very low mass, tiny galaxy that has somehow built up a lot of dust in it, which is something we traditionally do not expect, he said. There might just be these new types of objects that are confounding our researchers. For the very distant galaxies, everyone knew that the most definitive distance estimates would require JWST's most powerful capability. JWST not only observes starlight through photometry or measuring brightness, but also through spectroscopy or measuring light wavelengths. If a photometric observation is like a picture of a face in a crowd, then a spectroscopic observation is like a DNA test that can tell an individual's family history. NIDAR and others who found large early galaxies measured redshift using brightness-derived measurements, essentially looking at faces in the crowd using a really good camera. That method is far from airtight. At a January meeting of the American Astronomical Society, astronomers quipped that maybe half of the early galaxies observed with photometry alone will turn out to actually be measured. But in early December, cosmologists announced that they had combined both methods for four galaxies. The JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES, Team search for galaxies whose infrared light spectrum abruptly cuts off at a critical wavelength known as the Lyman break. This break occurs because hydrogen floating in the space between galaxies absorbs light. Because of the continuing expansion of the universe, the ever-rising raisin loaf, the light of distant galaxies is shifted, so the wavelength at that abrupt break shifts too. When a galaxy's light appears to drop off at longer wavelengths, it is more distant. Jade's identified spectra with redshifts up to 13.2, meaning the galaxy's light was emitted 13.2 billion years ago. As soon as the data was downloaded, Jade's researchers began freaking out in a shared Slack group. According to Kevin Haline, an astronomer at the University of Arizona, he said it was like, oh my God, oh my God, we did it, we did it, we did it. He said these spectra are just the beginning of what he thinks is going to be astronomy-changing science. B.R. Robertson, a Jade's astronomer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, says the findings show that the early universe changed rapidly in its first billion years, with the galaxies evolving ten times quicker than they do today. It's similar to how a hummingbird is a small creature, he said, but its heartbeat is so quick that it's living kind of a different life than other creatures. The heartbeat of these galaxies is happening on a much more rapid time scale than something the size of the Milky Way. But were their hearts beating too fast for CDM to explain? As astronomers and the public gawk at JWST images, researchers started working behind the scenes to determine whether the galaxies blinking in our view really depend upon CDM or just help nail down the numbers we should plug into its equations. One important yet poorly understood number concerns the masses of the earliest galaxies. Cosmologists try to determine their masses in order to tell whether they match CDM's predicted timeline of galaxy growth. A galaxy's mass is derived from its brightness, but Megan Donu, an astrophysicist at Michigan State University, says that at best, the relationship between mass and brightness is an educated guess based on assumptions gleaned from known stars and well-studied galaxies. One key assumption is that stars always form within a certain statistical range of masses called the initial mass function, IMF. This IMF parameter is crucial for gleaning a galaxy's mass from measurements of its brightness because hot, blue, heavy stars produce more light, while the majority of a galaxy's mass is typically locked up in cool, red small stars. But it's possible that the IMF was different in the early universe. If so, JWST's early galaxies might not be as heavy as their brightness suggests. They might be bright, but light. This possibility causes headaches because changing this basic input to the CDM model could give you almost any answer you want. Some astronomers consider fiddling with the IMF the domain of the wicked. If we don't understand the initial mass function, then understanding galaxies at high redshift is really a challenge, said Winnie Freeman, an astrophysicist at the University of Chicago. 
Her team is working on observations and computer simulations that will help pin down the IMF in different environments. Over the course of the fall, many experts came to suspect that tweaks to the IMF and other factors could be enough to square the very ancient galaxies lighting upon JWST's instruments with CDM. I think it's actually more likely that we can accommodate these observations within the standard paradigm, said Rachel Somerville, an astrophysicist at the Flatiron Institute, which, like Quantum Magazine, is funded by the Simons Foundation. In that case, she said, what we learn is how fast dark matter halos can collect the gas, how fast we can make the gas cool off and get dense and make stars. Maybe that happens faster in the early universe. We just don't know that yet. Observations from JWST will be critically important for refining models of star formation and galaxy evolution in that early era. But for the time being, she still emphasizes that there are still lots of holes in our understanding of galaxy formation. The early universe is still a black box. We can't see in it yet. It may just be that the first galaxies formed more quickly, but it could also be that we don't yet understand the essential physics of how they formed. In the meantime, what astronomers do know is that they'll be using JWST data for years to come. NIDAR notes that while some claim the universe is broken, it's a sign of progress. It's not a problem. It's a good sign, he said. The more we discover, the more we realize that we need to rewrite everything we think we know.